there. Welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart, the Fen Treasure. We're glad that you're here. If you're just finding our show for the very first time, thank you. We appreciate that. We hope you'll give our episode a like at the conclusion and subscribe to our channel, which is very easy. It doesn't cost a dime. Yep. And when you do so, please click the bell so that you might get notifications each time a new show comes out. Uh, we ask you to inbox us from time to time at your convenience with your questions. And some of them sometimes are a little out of control, and other times they are Fen related and such is the case today, Ron. Yes. Okay? Yeah. So the first email question that we have comes from Alan in Colorado. Ooh, I bet it's cold there right now. Yeah. Yeah. And smoky. <laughs> yeah. Lou and Ronnie. Enjoy your show regularly, especially when you do the Fen Treasure updates. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate that. I have a question. Do you think Fen wants someone to find the treasure while he's still alive? Uh, okay. All right. So my opinion, mm -hmm. my opinion is it's like a game of hide and seek. So while it's, while it's fun to be hidden and out of sight for a little while, eventually you want somebody to find you. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I feel like Fen wants this treasure found, and he's not a young man, and he, he wants it found before he's gone. Well, what would be the advantages to that? Uh, I think it's like the media exposure would blow up oh. immediately uh -huh. uh, because as it's gone on, there are fewer and fewer, you know, media hits for him. And I'm, he doesn't look like he's one that shies away from the spotlight at all. So I, I think he would probably enjoy it if somebody found it. Well, I'm a little bit on the opposite side, Ron, aside, Ronnie. It's um, okay to be wrong. That's all right. <laughs> I believe that Finn is so much of a showman that he would like for the treasure to be undiscovered for a long, long time because he leaves a longer legacy. And I think that, you know, as proud a man as he is, as much as he's been successful, and in as much as he's put all this time into that poem, uh, the two trips that he made to hide the treasure, I think he wants it to go on forever. I mean, there's that's that's the other side of the coin, and it certainly it brings him after he's gone. Even if it's a hundred years before it's found, it brings him right back to the forefront. Yeah. So it extends his legacy, and I, I get that. But I mean, for me, if it were me, I'd want it found. Okay. So our question for you, our viewer today, is as follows: If you could ask Forrest Fenn. One question, and it can't be, where is the treasure? <laughs> Sorry, Ronnie. Yeah. I hate to blow it for you. <laughs> what would that question be? Now, I asked that question of a Fen searcher by the name of Mike. Okay. And here's what Mike had to say. I do not want to ask him any questions, and I do not want to hear any answers from him directed to me. I only want to hear what he has said publicly. I have emailed him, and I chose not to have him reply to me and told him so. If he did, I would delete and the email unread. Wow. Um, okay. He goes on to say, anything he might say to me would throw me off balance because I would not be able to process it objectively. I don't think he deliberately misleads anyone, but he doesn't help them either. I think he hopes and expects a complete stranger to find it. If so, why would anyone not want to remain a stranger to him? It's less complicated that way. You know what? A lot of, a lot of validity to that. But, I mean, if, if you're going to go through the trouble of sending an, an, an email... Wouldn't you just want her? Wouldn't curiosity? <laughs> if Evidently he replies, not. And he doesn't reply to a lot of people. <laughs> no. But if he did reply, wouldn't curiosity just cause you to open it and read it? I got another email from a guy who, uh, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name, but uh, briefly what he said was, um, 
that he used to communicate with Forrest Fenn rather regularly. And as the years went by and Forrest got a little older, those communications stopped. Right. So I think that's kind of where it's at at this point. You know, he just, I guess, you know, his time is precious. I'm not saying I, I suggest that anything is happening or anything like that. I'm sure he's very healthy for an 80 plus year old man. Yeah. Um, so what I'm saying is, uh, you know, he doesn't have time for that anymore. No, I don't think so. And he doesn't want to give anything more away. So if you're sending him emails in hopes that he will reply, I wouldn't count on that. No. All right. Um, Ronnie, our question is, if you could ask one question, what would that question be? What would your question be? So my, and we get a lot of, we get a lot of these questions sent to us. And so in response to that is, is he 100% sure that the chest is still there. So what you're suggesting by your question is that somebody could have found it and not told him. And now there is the the matter of the bracelet that he wants to have returned to him. Right. Uh -huh. Yep. So uh, really, you know, I'm probably I'm sure he probably gets emails all the time and say I found the treasure and it's just some <laughs> right. lunatic. You right. Know? Yeah. You have to be able to. I don't know what's going on there. Well, and then. You know the other, the other side too is people that maybe want to start searching, but they don't want to go on a wild goose chase. Um, and so I have I, people that want me to go for them and spend my money. I know I I have <laughs> dozens of emails. A lot. This is where it is. Go get it. Yeah. You know what? Still, you go get it. And here we sit. Yeah. <laughs> so you go get it and tell me how it works out. Yeah. Let that. me know. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, I think that that's, that's probably... Okay, so you want to know, I, I, does he know for a fact it's still there? Right. All right. My question is, well, let, let's do this one here first from Chris. Okay, what Chris. Do you, what is that one? So I get, uh, I get several emails from uh, Chris. I think you pronounce your last name Kenzie, if I'm not mistaken. And Chris asked the question, uh, how does Forrest Fenn know that someone has been within 200 feet of the treasure. Um, you know, I mean, he said on several occasions that, and he, but he doesn't say who, obviously, but he said from clues and pictures that people have sent him that there have been several searchers within 200 feet. I would answer that question by saying coordinates. Coordinates, that's how he knows. Yeah, I, I'm basing it on that and also that maybe somebody has sent their uh, their solutions for a couple of the clues. Now, one of the videos that I watch on Forrest Fenn says that they believe that the treasure is located not far from the solution to the first couple of clues. So that once you've gone and found you know, the, the House of Brown and where warm waters halt, and you're probably, you're in the hood. Mm -hmm. So maybe from that alone, he's deducting that they're, they're 200 feet away. Someone had a solve that they sent me, I guess about maybe two months ago, and they said that uh, their location was very, very close to a, a ski run, and that there were cameras a security, I suppose, that show the lifts, and I, I know a little bizarre, but uh, he can actually see it through those cameras. Interesting, huh? Hmm. Now I don't know if if I give him as much credit as he's that technologically sound, right? But uh, again, it just uh, one Some of the more. many solves that we get. Now, as for me, my question would be this: Forest. God forbid this happens soon and happens in the time that you wish for it to happen, but you pass away. Who is then in charge of this treasure? Is it your wife who you claim does not even know? Or are you going to pass this information on to a family member? And what I'm suggesting is his grandson. Yeah. Somebody has to know and continue this treasure hunt. And my feeling is adding one more person to this mix 
only opens up the door to a whole lot of shenanigans. Yeah. I mean, if you have to be sure that that person that you pass it on to is as steadfast as you are. Mm-hmm. And that, Good luck. You know, hey, no, I'm not giving out any. I've given all the clues you need. Um, uh, that's it. This is where it is. But... Good luck finding it. You're not getting anything else from me. And that person that gets that information has to keep that same attitude. Uh, Otherwise, hey, my grandpa just told me this. This is where the treasure is. And before you know it, a thousand people know and it'll be found in hours. Chaos. Yeah. Uh, People running through the desert. (laughs) Yes. Over mountains, through trees. Yes. Okay, so look, uh, before we get out of here, two things I wanted to bring up. Number one, I stumbled across this uh, website I found fascinating. Uh, several weeks back, we did an episode on the Beale ciphers, and I'll, I'll run that above here so you can see the link. A lot of people are asking me if there are any ciphers for the Fen treasure. So, in an effort to try to find you an answer, I found this website. It's called uh, fenciphers.com. Pretty easy, huh? Yep. All right. Uh, the, the person that runs that, his name is David Brandon. And he says, hey, Lou, thanks for the response on my new website. Uh, What can I do for you? What would you like to chat about? Do you need me to explain my methods? Here's what he goes on to say. The total number of combinations is about 1.307 million. Damn. That is 24 numbers with nine possibilities each representing the clues. Uh, That means only one in 1.3 million combinations will produce five ones, two two sevens, five eights, and two nines. Now, if you look at the permutations, which is already out of my scientific realm, (laughs) rather than combinations, that means we care about the order of those numbers. Then there is 407 trillion possibilities. Go buy a lotto ticket. This means there is about a 99 0.9999999999 0.9999999999 Hold me, Ronnie. How many more? <laughs> Catch your breath. Take nine, 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 two, one, one percent chance okay. that the ciphered pattern was not random and unknown to Forrest. Ooh. That is 13 zeros that is random. And anyway, let me know what you want to talk about. Uh, yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> we can talk about that. But you probably already knew that. Yeah. All right, David, thank you very much. And a shout out to your website once again. It's FenCyphers, C-Y-P-H-E-R-S dot com. If you enjoyed today's episode, we hope you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, when you do, please feel free to subscribe to our show. And when you do, click that bell, Ronnie. Yeah. Uh, you get notifications each time a new show comes out, and our shows come out on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9, p- uh, 9 a.m. Pacific. 9 p.m. Yeah, no, that's too Damn. late. Damn. Too late. I've been, and, I've been better for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Noon <laughs> Eastern time. All right, so thank you again for watching. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corbett Ryan. And this has been another Fen episode of Men Are So Smart. See you next time. And then, Ronnie, this is what I wanted to get to. Okay. This is a rumor that um, I've heard a couple of times now through several people. I know what it is. There is a Fen searcher that has her or his own Fen channel. And this person has been a boots-on-the-ground person for many, many years. Recently, those boots on the ground searches have come to a screeching halt. And a couple of things have been observed about this person's program. He's got new boots. <laughs> He's got new boots on the ground. He's got new boots on the ground, first of all. Uh, this person, uh-huh. he or she, I should say, he or she has recently uh, curtailed trips to the specific area that he or she has been 
searching. This person's living arrangements have changed dramatically in Up the last, words. yes, uh, <laughs> uh, in the last six months or so. And this person has made countless upgrades to their podcasting slash video show. Now, if you are a uh, really hardcore searcher, you probably know of this person. We will give you more details, but what we're suggesting here is that maybe this person maybe maybe found it found the treasure and is not saying anything about it. Yeah. What do you think? Well, we're not going to mention this person's name. And I don't want you to mention any names in the comments below. Right. Okay? We're not out to do that. I'm just saying, in our quest to find the person who has found the treasure, we think we may be on the scent of something. So what I... Somebody has sent me something along those same lines with the same, you know, theory... But and the reason that they believe he hasn't said he or she hasn't said anything <laughs> is because it would hurt their uh, YouTube videos, right? And they make money off their YouTube videos. My response is, I think he's got all the he or she has all the money he or she needs, probably now, yeah. if if they found it. Mm -hmm. So why would you keep doing videos if you've got, you know? If you've got Fen's treasure. Now, let me just add a caveat to that. We are not making any money off of this show. No. Uh, we really don't. And, you know, some people say to me, well, you know, you Fen channel, you should do more. Well, you know what? We're not just a Fen channel. Right. As you can tell from our library, we have over 360 episodes of our show. Of course, some of the most popular shows are the fan episodes, and we right. know that. Right. And we know that there are people out there who count on us to bring some information that you don't get from some of the other shows. So there you have it. Um, we're not trying to pinpoint who this person is. We're just saying we are on the scent of something, and we'll keep you posted. Yeah. Is it possible? Uh,